Good afternoon, shareholders and guests. I'd like to welcome you all to 2021 virtual annual and special meeting of shareholders of Poet Technologies, Inc. My name is Kevin Barnes. I'm the VP of Finance and Treasurer of the company. Unfortunately, COVID-19 has forced us to hold the meeting in this virtual format, but it's certainly good that we can all still have an opportunity to, to interact. I trust that you have all been keeping safe and well under the circumstances. Now, as noted from uh, your information circular, today's meeting is conducted virtually via the Lumi platform, which will allow only registered shareholders to participate in voting. Please note, if you have already voted, you do not need to vote on the resolutions as they are being read. The meeting today will be about two hours long, where we will first handle the formal part of the meeting chaired by Peter Charbonneau, the director and chair of the Corporate Governance and Nominating Committee. It will be followed by presentations by our most three, our three most senior executives. Then it will be wrapped up with a Q&A session. So with us today, with us today, we have uh, certain members of the organization that uh, has been represented. We have the CFO of the company, Tom Micah. We have the CEO, Suresh Vankatesan. We have Vivek Rajgarhia. We have myself, Kevin Barnes, Peter Charbonneau, Mohan Warrior, Jean-Louis Melange, and Glenn Riley. The agenda for the formal part of the meeting will cover certain topics. And the topics to be addressed at the meeting will be First, review, receive the audited consolidated financial statements of the company for the financial year, and to review the auditor's report, and to address the unaudited consolidated financial statements for June 30, 2021. We'll be select, electing six directors to hold office until the next annual meeting of shareholders, or until their successors are elected. We will appoint Markham LLP as the auditors of the company and to authorize their director, their directors to fix their remuneration. And we will pass an ordinary resolution approving the amendments of the company's stock option plan and approving the 2021 plan as amended. Insiders of the company will be abstaining from this vote. And last but not least, we'll consider and if deemed appropriate, approve a special resolution substantially in the form set forth in the circular to amend the, uh, the outstanding shares of the organization in a uh, reorganization fashion for a range of two to 10 pre-consolidation shares. And we'll authorize the directors of the company to deem the final consolidation ratio within such a range. At this point, I'd like to turn the meeting over to our lead director and chair of the Corporate Governance and Nominating Committee, Peter Charbonneau, to chair the formal part of the meeting. Peter. As, no, as noted in the notice of meeting and company management information circular, due to the current COVID crisis and a, as part of the company's social responsibility and preparedness plans in response to COVID-19, this year's annual general and special meeting is available online using the Lumi meeting platform, which allows registered shareholders or their proxy holders to vote in real time, as well as submit questions and comments to be read and addressed at the meeting. If you have a question or comment, please submit it through, Lumi, <clears throat> through the Lumi meeting platform by clicking on the messaging icon. I will now ask Thomas Mika, the secretary of the company, to act as secretary of this meeting. I wish to point out that only shareholders of the company or their appointees by proxies 
are allowed to move and second the adoption of resolutions and to vote at this meetings. To this end, shareholders who are in attendance or their proxy holders have been provided with an opportunity to electronically vote for, against, or withholding vote where applicable. The voting platform is now open for voting on all resolutions should any shareholder choose to change his or her vote. The voting platform will allow you to choose to vote on each resolution immediately or wait until conclusion of discussions on each resolution prior to casting your vote. If you have already voted, you do not need to do so again. There will be an opportunity to ask questions on each resolution under consideration. Once discussion on all items of business has concluded, I will give you a minute to enter your votes and then declare voting closed at the end when all formal business items have been discussed and voted on. There are several routine matters that must be dealt with at this meeting. In order to expedite these and leave more time for presentations and questions after the formal meeting, I've arranged for certain persons to make and second the formal motions and will call on these persons at the appropriate time. The first item of business will be the appointment of a scrutineer to report on the shareholders present in person and the number of shares represented in person and by proxy at the meeting or any adjournment thereof. Mr. Chairman, I move that Billy Cha of Computer Share Investor Services, Inc. be hereby appointed scrutineer to report on the shareholders present in person and by proxy, the number of shares represented in person and the number of shares represented by proxy at the meeting and at any adjournment or adjournments thereof, and to compute the votes on any poll taken at this meeting and at any adjournment or adjournments hereof and to report thereon to the chairman. Mr. Chairman, I second the motion. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Mike, uh, for that motion and seconding. Uh, are there any questions or comments? Hearing and receiving none, by the authority granted to me as chairman, I declare, I declare the motion carried. Uh, the next item uh, is the uh, notice of, uh, of meeting. Uh, in accordance with the notice and access rules under National Instrument 54-101, the company has sent its proxy-related proxy materials to shareholders using the notice and access method. As such, shareholders received a proxy form and or voting instruction form in paper format. The notice of meeting and the management information circular may be accessed or downloaded from the company's website or from CDAR. The proof of mailing of the proxy material has been filed with me by the secretary of the company. I, th I direct that a copy of such proof of mailing be annexed to the minutes of the meeting as a schedule. I will now ask someone to move and someone to second the adoption of the resolution dispensing with the meeting of the minutes. The floor recognized Kevin Barnes. Mr. Chairman, I move that the reading of the notice of this meeting be dispensed with. And I recognize Mr. Tom Mika. Mr. Chairman, I second the motion. Are there any questions or comments? Hearing we're receiving none by the authority granted to me as chairman, I declare the motion carried. Uh, the next item on our agenda is the scrutineer's report. The scrutineer has provided me with a preliminary report on shareholder attendance represented at this meeting. The scrutineer reports that there are present at the meeting in person or by <clears throat> proxy 517 shareholders holding 108,725,063 common shares, which represents 30.90% of the total issued and outstanding shares available to vote. Accordingly, I declare that the requisite quorum of shareholders is present and that the meeting is duly called and properly constituted for the transaction of business. 
I direct that the scrutineer's final report on the attendance be annexed to the minutes of the meeting. The next item is the destruction of proxies. Uh, I shall call upon the secretary to file uh, with the company's records a list uh, of shareholders of the company showing the respective holdings of shares in the capital stock of the company and the original proxies deposited at the meeting. I will now ask someone to move and someone to second the adoption of a res resolution uh, respecting the destruction of proxies. And the chair recognizes Mr. Mike White. Mr. Chairman, I move that the proxies forwarded by shareholders for use at this annual meeting of shareholders of the company be retained with the records of the company for a period of six months from the date hereof and that they be destroyed thereafter. The chair recognizes Mr. Kevin Barnes. Mr. Chairman, I second the motion. Thank you, Mr. White. Mr. Barnes, are there any questions or comments? Hearing none, by the authority granted to me as chairman, I declare the motion carried. The next item is the minutes of the previous me meeting. The last meeting of the shareholders of the company was a special uh, meeting held on February 19th, 2021. And the, 20, and the minutes of such meetings were filed in the minute book and are available for inspection. I will now ask someone to move and someone to second the adoption of a resolution dispensing with the reading of the minutes and that the minutes be taken as read and verified as correct. The chair recognizes Mr. Bill White. Mr. White. Mr. Chairman, it's Mike White here. Perhaps uh, there's uh, some difficulty with his audio. I suggest perhaps Kevin Barnes be recognized to make Kevin? a statement. The floor recognizes. Mr. Chairman, I move that the reading of the minutes of the last meeting of shareholders be dispensed with and the minutes be taken as read and verified as correct. Now the floor recognizes Mr. Mike White. Mr. Chairman, I second the motion. Thank you, Mr. White and Mr. Barnes. Are there any questions or comments? Hearing none by the authority granted to me as chairman, I declare the motion carried. So the next item on our agenda is the financial statements and auditors report. I now present to the meeting the amended audited consolidated financial statements of the company for the year ended December 31st to 2020, together with the auditor's report, as well as the unaudited consolidated financial statements for the six months ending June 30th, 2021. Copies of such documents were filed on CDAR, posted on the company's website, and mailed to those shareholders who had requested a copy. I will now ask someone to move and someone to second the adoption of a resolution dispensing with the reading of the auditor's report. The floor recognized Mr. Kevin Burns. Mr. Dispensed with. And the floor. Mr. Chairman, I second the motion. Thank you, Mr. Burns and Mr. Vika. Are there any questions or comments? Hearing none, by the authority granted to me as chairman, I declare that the motion is carried. Uh, the next item on our agenda is the election of directors. It is now <clears throat> in order to proceed with the election of directors and to elect six directors to hold office until the next annual meeting of shareholders or until their successors are elected or appointed. I now declare that the meeting open for nominations. Floor recognizes Mr. Mike White. Mr. Chairman, I nominate Suresh Venkatesan 
Mohandas Warrior, Glenn Riley, Jean-Louis Melange, Peter Charbonneau, and Chris Siopas as directors of the company to hold office until the next annual meeting of shareholders or until their successors are elected or appointed. Thank you, Mr. White. The person nominated or management's nominees for re-election and are the current directors of the company, as was stated in the information circular delivered to shareholders. The company bylaws provide that in addition to any other applicable requirements for a nomination to be made by a nominating shareholder, the nominating shareholder must have given timely notice thereof in proper written form to the corporate secretary of a corporation at the principal executive offices of the corporation, not less than 30 days prior to the date of the annual meeting of shareholders. No nominations were received from a nominating shareholders. Six persons have been nominated to fill the six directors position. Since no notices of further nominations have been received by the company, and since the votes to date have been overwhelmingly in favor of the election of all of the directors, I would now ask someone to move and someone to second the adoption of a resolution approving the election of seven nominees and directing me, the chairman of this meeting, to cast a single ballot for such election. So the floor recognizes Mr. Bill White. Mr. Chairman, I move that the election of the six nominees be approved and that the chairman be directed to cast a single ballot for the election of the six nominees as directors of the company for the ensuing year to hold office until the next annual meeting or until their successors are elected or appointed. Thank you, Bill. The floor recognizes Mr. Kevin Barnes. Mr. Chairman, I second the motion. Are there any questions or comments? If you choose to cast a vote on this resolu resolution, please do so now. If you have already voted, you do not need to do so again. And I'll pause here for a few moments to allow people to vote if they so desire. I believe that should be sufficient time. I declare those nominated to have been duly elected as directors of the company to hold office until the next annual meeting of shareholders or until their successes are elected or appointed. Next item on our agenda is the appointment of auditors uh, and the authorization of the directors to fix the remuneration of such auditors. I'll now ask someone to move and second uh, the adoption of a resolution appointing auditors for the current year and authorizing the directors to fix their remuneration of such auditors. Uh, the floor recognizes Mr. Kevin Barnes. Mr. Chairman, I move that Markham LLP be appointed auditors of the company to hold office until the close of the next annual meeting of shareholders and that the directors of the company be authorized to fix the remuneration to be paid to the auditors. Thank you, Kevin. And the floor recognizes Mr. Tom Mika. Mr. Chairman, I second the motion. Thank you, Tom. Are there any questions or comments? Moving on, if you choose to cast a vote on this resolution, please do so now. If you have already voted, you do not need to do so again. And again. Choose to do so.
I declare that uh, Markham LLP has been duly appointed auditors of the company to hold office until the next annual meeting of shareholders, and that the directors have been duly authorized to fix their Next item uh, is the increase in the number of stock options available stock option plan. On August 31st, 2021, the directors resolved to increase the fixed number of shares reserved for issuance under the stock option plan to 20% of the issued and outstanding shares of the company on the day prior to the meeting subject to shareholder and the TSX Venture Exchange approval to be known as the 2021 plan. All other terms and conditions remain unchanged. As of October 6, 2021, there were 354,525,915 shares of the company issued and outstanding. If approved by the shareholders, the fixed number issuable under the plan will increase from 58,538,554 to 17,709,183, that number being 20% of the issued and outstanding common shares of the company at the close of business yesterday, October 6, 2021. To be effective, the company must obtain approval of a simple majority of the shareholders at the meeting to increase the number of options. But excluding insiders, their associates and any eligible participant who are classified as the disinterested shareholders with respect to the adoption of the 2021 plan. For the purposes hereof, an insider is a director or senior officer of the company, a director or senior officer of a company that is itself an insider or subsidiary of the company or a person who control directly or indirectly through beneficial ownership or a combination thereof uh, over securities of the company extends to securities carrying more than 10% of the voting rights attached to all companies outstanding voting securities. So the floor now recognizes Mr. Bill White. Mr. Chairman, I move the amendment of the company stock option plan pursuant to which the board of directors may from time to time grant stock options to directors, officers, employees, and consultants of the company and its subsidiaries as follows. To increase the number of common shares of the company reserved for issuance under the plan the fixed number from 58,538,554 to 70,905,183. That number being 20% of the issued and outstanding common shares of the company at the close of business on October the 6th, 2021. And with all interested parties abstaining from voting to approve the adoption of the 2021 plan, incorporating the aforesaid amendment providing for the grant of the increased number of options under the plan and under all other previously established share compensation arrangements. Thank you, Bill. The floor will now recognize Mr. Mike White. Mr. Chairman, I second the motion. Uh, thank you, Mike. Are there any questions or comments? So if you choose to cast a vote on this resolution, please do so now. If you have already voted, you do not need to do so again. And again, I'll pause here for a few moments to allow people a chance to vote if they so desire. That's sufficient time to allow people to vote. I declare that stock option plan has been amended to increase the number of common shares reserved for issuance under the plan from 58,538,554 to 70,905,183, 
that number being 20% of the issued and outstanding common shares of the company at the close of business on October 6, 2021. I also declare the adoption of the 2021 plan. So the next item on our agenda is the consolidation of issued and outstanding securities. The Board of Directors of Poet Technologies, after consultation with its legal and financial advisors, unanimously approved the proposed consolidation of the issued and outstanding securities of the company, as described in the management information circular that was mailed to the shareholders in connection with this meeting. The Board of Directors unanimously recommends that shareholders vote for consolidation for the consolidation resolution. In order to be effective, the consolidation resolution must be approved by the affirmative vote of not less than 66 and two thirds percent of the votes by shareholders cast at the meeting in respect of such resolution. Unless the shareholder directs that his or her common shares are to be voted against the consolidated, consolidated resolution, the persons named in the enclosed form of proxy intend to vote for the consolidation. In the event shareholders approval is not obtained, the consolidation will not occur. Notwithstanding the approval of the consolidation resolution by the applicable margin, the board of directors reserve the right not to implement the consolidation. I will now ask someone to move and someone to se second the adoption of the special resolution to consolidate the issued and outstanding securities of Poet Technologies Inc. as described in the management information circular. The floor recognizes Mr. Kevin Barnes. Mr. Chairman, I move that the consolidation of the issued and outstanding securities of Poet Technologies Inc. as set out in the management information circular mailed to shareholders in connection with this meeting, approving the consolidation of the issued and outstanding securities be adopted. For greater certainty, I move that Poet Technologies Inc be authorized to amend its articles so that the issued and outstanding common shares in the capital of the company are consolidated on the basis of one post-consolidation common share for a number of pre-consolidated common shares to be determined within a range of between two and 10 pre-consolidated common shares and the board of directors of the company be hereby authorized to determine the final consolidation ratio within such a range. Notwithstanding the passing of this resolution by the shareholders of the company, the board of directors is hereby authorized and empowered without further notice to or approval of the shareholders not to proceed with the consolidation or to revoke this resolution at any time prior to the consolidation becoming effective without further approval of the shareholders. Any director or officer of the company is hereby authorized and directed acting for in the name of and on behalf of the company to execute or cause to be executed under the seal of the company or otherwise and to deliver or to cause to be delivered all such documents, agreements and instruments and to do or to cause to be done all such other acts and things as such person determines to be necessary or desirable or required by any regulatory authority in order to carry out the intent of this resolution and the matters authorized hereby. Such determination to be conclusively evidenced by the execution and delivery of such document, agreement or instrument or the doing of any such act or thing. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, the floor recognizes Mr. Bill White. Mr. Chairman, I second the motion. Thank you, Bill. If you choose to cast a ballot on this resolution, please do so now. If you have already voted, you do not need to do so again. I'll now pause for a moment while people have an opportunity to vote.
I declare that the company is hereby authorized to amend its articles so that the issued and outstanding common shares in the capital of the company are consolidated on the, on the basis of one post-consolidated common share for a number of pre-consolidation common shares to be determined within a range between two and 10 pre-consolidation common shares and the board of directors of the company be hereby authorized to determine the final consolidation ratio within such range. So that uh, brings us to the end of our agenda. Voting is now closed on all item of business that's have been scheduled. Plenar <coughs> preliminary results indicated that all items of business have passed. The final results will be posted on CDAR within the next 48 hours. The formal business of the meeting has now been concluded. If there is no further business, our Chief Executive Officer, Dr. Suresh Venkatasan, and our President and General Manager, Vivek Rajagaria, <coughs> Rajagaria, and our Chief Financial Officer, Thomas Mika, will be providing updates on the affairs and business of the company. And we will be pleased to answer any question from shareholders. Is there any further business? The floor recognizes Mr. Mike, Mike White. Mr. Chairman, I move the meeting be terminated. Thank you, Mike. The floor recognizes Mr. Thomas Mika. Mr. Chairman, I second the motion. Thank you, Tom. Are there any other questions or comments? I declare this meeting to be terminated. Uh, Dr. Suresh Venkatesan will now address the shareholders with a presentation, followed by a question and answer period. If you have a question or comment, please submit it through the Lumi meeting platform by clicking on the messaging icon. Please reserve all your questions until a conclusion. Suresh, I'll pass. Thank you, Peter. Uh, operator, can you uh, advance the slide to the next page, please? And good afternoon, good evening, uh, good morning, uh, everybody, depending on where where in the world you are. Um, but before I get started, let me, um, I'm going to try to, can, can you pass control of the slides um, to me, please? Thank you. Um, we'll spend the next few minutes uh, giving you a brief um, update on, on the state of the business. Um, I will start with an introduction and then turn it over to both Vivek and, and Tom to comment um, as well. And we'll open the floor up for questions. Um, next slide, please. I'm sorry, we're having some technical issues. Next slide, please. Yeah, um, so, um, you know, as, as we, um, you know, are focused on, on what we're trying to do in terms of, you know, delivering product to customers, it, it, it's often good to step back and, and reassess, um, you know, why we're here, what our vision is, um, and, um, and work on our strategy to achieve said vision and mission so we you know our vision is to be a global leader in integrated photonic solutions um using chip scale or wafer scale assembly technology um we do want to deploy broadly our optical interposer technology platform um i think over time we have emphasized the value and benefit of using a platform technology and, and we are an integration platform play 
um, that enables a seamless integration of electronics and photonics. Um, that continues to be our vision. It was why I joined the company um, back almost five years ago. And, um, you know, I believe uh, at this point we have, you know, firmly established ourselves as a key player to reckon with in the space um, by deploying our technology and uh, by incorporating it into products that are now valued and coveted um, by the market in general. So a year ago, we talked about products and, you know, I think overwhelmingly as we move forward from here, we will be talking about customers and the business end of kind of what we need to do in terms of converting you know, this process of technology development into commercial success. Um, if you go to the next slide. So uh, we had uh, earlier this year uh, put out a six point strategy of, uh, of how we intend to operate our business uh, in terms of achieving our, our vision and mission. Um, the first two have to do with our, you know, our, our nuts and bolts, our fundamental business, validating the platform, deploying it into a set of products, uh, proliferating those products into the market and selling devices and designs based on these products, primarily focused in the data communication space. Um, we expect to do this via POET um, as well as through our joint venture, uh, Superphotonics. The joint venture was set up to deliver maximum cash flow, you know, back to its parent. Um, it was set up in China because, as you will hear later, you know, a good portion of uh, module manufacturing in the optical space is in China. It's where the biggest demand is for some of the products, and you know, we're well established in that space to exploit the localization imperative that is in China. So, you know, super photonics, Poet Senjin, you know, as part of a strategy to exploit that localization and imperative and, and be able to effectively provide local solutions into the Chinese market. Um, following up on that is, um, you know, uh, an evaluation and an assessment of synergistic you know, potential acquisitions or inorganic growth opportunities that solidify our value proposition as well as provide differentiation and customer access. Um, thereafter, we'll be looking at, you know, points four and five applications in new vertical markets, uh, be it point of use healthcare or geolocation type applications, LIDAR, et cetera. And adjacent markets in telecommunications, you know, these are 5G and or coherent technologies, as well as kind of moving towards, you know, what is broadly called the space of co-packaged optics that applies not only to communications, but also to computing, um, you know, in, in terms of, you know, optical neural nets, et cetera. Um, and then finally, um, you know, as the technology gets hold, um, you know, we would explore opportunistically uh, technology licensing models, uh, especially in areas that are non-competitive uh, to POET or areas that we don't intend to participate in. So we had kind of laid out the strategy and we've been executing our plan. We have a strategy committee inside of the company and we review the plan and progress associated with the strategy on a quarterly basis. Uh, but these are the fundamental prim, you know, pillars of our strategy that support the vision and mission that I had presented in the earlier slide. If you move to the next slide, please. Uh, so POET's commercialization roadmap, um, and again, uh, you know, in consistent with the strategy that we've talked about, our immediate focus this year and, and into next year is to deploy our solutions in the datacom market. I've said this before many times, we are a new technology platform. And while technology sounds great, you know, it has zero value unless it's incorporated into products and incorporated into products that are coveted by the market. And so, you know, we need to do that. We need to establish a beachhead position in certain markets with our technology before looking to proliferate. And so our focus has been you know, let's establish that beachhead in data communications where there is a pain point to solve 
and it is a high volume segment of the market. Um, so that's what we're doing. We've kind of been doing that in 2021 successfully. We would see you know, progress in that in 2022. We are already uh, based on some of the discussions we've had with folks in China during the CIOE and others, looking at the next you know, a click from there, which is 400, 800 gig, as well as certain co-packaged optics applications. And so there will be, while there is a team focused on new product introduction, customer access, acquisition, et cetera, there will be a team focused on these next generation opportunities. And we will be migrating towards that, you know, starting next year and then, you know, uh, out from there. Um, and final, finally, you know, we are already looking at specific segments um, in, in alternate verticals, healthcare, autonomous vehicles, et cetera, um, and, and computing, of course, um, that you know, come later in terms of how the revenue builds up into the company and how the customer design wins work. Um, but those are seeds that are being sown now, but you will hear us primarily talking about the first two aspects of what we present on the slide over the course of this next year. Go to the next slide, please. A couple of years ago at the AGM, we talked, you know, we talked primarily about the technology. Um, you know, what is the technology? What has the technology been? What is the validation? That was the process that we started in 2017, you know, as we pivoted off of Gallium Marsonite towards the optical interposer. And, and really much of our presentations over the course of that period of time had to do with the technology and the potential and the fact that customers needed to validate aspects of the technology, et cetera. A year ago, we have talked about the fact that the development of the technology and its concept and testing had been completed and we were migrating into a product design or a product development phase. And, and this year and going into next, um, you know, we're kind of in this, the business end of this process, which is introducing the product to, to manufacturing and then market entry and commercialization as it relates to you know, customer acquisition, customer access and broad deployment. So that is kind of the theme, if you will, for 2021 into 2022. That's why I had the words new product innovation. Innovation in the sense we're introducing products that the market cares about, that has a differentiator, that has a plus one factor. It's not a me too. And, and that's where the innovation moniker in, in this process comes about. But we're, we're now in that phase. And Vivek will give you a lot more color about what that means, um, you know, specifically in terms of what we're doing. Next slide, please. So 2021, our key accomplishments, um, you know, in Q1 of this year, we started our joint venture operations. Um, we also put out pre-alpha product prototypes for the 100 gig, 200 gig CWDM4 optical engines and light bars. And um, light bars were primarily as remote lasers for the 400 gig applications. We also incorporated Poet Sengen, recruited a leadership team, and that team has now grown. We've just recently uh, added a director of marketing in that team that is, you know, chartered with basically, you know, increasing our outreach and access uh, from a customer perspective. Um, in quarter two of this year, um, it's kind of our first step of a coming out, if you will. Um, with live product demonstrations at the OFC uh, in 2021 that was done virtually. And it did help accelerate certain customer engagements and traction and, and really put a lot more rigor into, you know, the, the, the design win process, you know, and what it takes to actually convert a potential opportunity and a discussion into a real contract. Um, we also established a strategic partnership for 400 gig optical engines using silicon photonics based modulators. Um, in quarter three uh, this year, we did six live demos of our products, um, including the 100 gig, the 200 gig receive, a 400 gig, you know, pre-alpha demonstration in terms of what our solution is going to be next year in that 400 gig space, um, as well as a couple of light bar solutions for remote lasing applications. We increased customer commitments and engagements um, and also delivered the alpha samples um, which were 
which was a little late relative to what we had expected. Um, but nevertheless, we did complete uh, delivery of those samples to the first of, first set of customers um, in um, in quarter three, which of course you know also led to certain design wins that that we subsequently announced and that Vivek will talk about. Um, in quarter four, um, we are uh, based on the results that we have seen from the alphas that we've been working on since about June of this year. Um, there are certain tweaks that need to be made to the design for manufacturability and for volume production. So we've incorporated those and they're currently, you know, going through the foundry process through Solterra. And we would expect that in Q4 and definitely by the end of the year, we would start deploying, you know, betas. So in some cases, customers will receive betas directly. In other cases, they would, you know, go a uh, step from, from alpha to beta. And we would also be providing, um, you know, the alpha samples of our 400 gig receivers first. You know, we showed them the transmitter, um, you know, at the CIOE, we'll follow it up with the receiver and then finally the full TXRX engine um, as we get into 2022. Um, I think, you know, um, a few words at this point. I um, mean, I think you can compare what we've done this year to what I'd said we would do. And, you know, of course, there are some puts and takes and some changes. So, you know, obviously development in a company like ours is a dynamic process. We react, um, you know, to, to what, what we are seeing on a regular basis. But largely, I feel like we've tacked in the right direction and largely, you know, met, met the goals and milestones that we had for the company. And we continue to make progress along the lines and the strategy that we've laid out for ourselves. Uh, a few things on the on the climate that we're operating in. We continue to have significant challenges and face significant challenges as a company as a consequence of the pandemic. Um, you know, outside of you know the proliferation of the Delta um, in 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 our Asian um, spots that that we we you know operate from, which you know prevents any travel to these regions. Um, there have been periodic shutdowns um, that, had, that we have had to work through and we had to work around. Um, we do have, you know, obviously this sh shortage of almost everything, right, in the world today, uh, but primarily in, in, in semiconductors. Um, and we continue to face that, you know, with, with our foundry, we would expect that that goes through 2022. We've reserved some capacity that allows us to continue to have continuity in terms of supply, uh, but cycle times are longer, lead times are more challenging, and we really have to you know, be smart about you know, how we work ourselves through this. Shipping that used to take a day or two now takes a week or more. Um, and, and if every time there is an issue with the pandemic that comes up, you know, shipping is disrupted again. So these are challenges that we have faced through this year. So if you put all of that in perspective, um, I commend my team. Uh, I commend you know, everybody on, on the POET staff to that for the sacrifices and the work they've put in to be able to get us to a point where we're fundamentally on track uh, in terms of our schedules. We have not slipped, um, you know, our beta, beta is still on track. Uh, production is still on track. We did have hiccups in alpha. Uh, where things delayed by a couple of months, but but largely, you know, we've maintained our momentum, and that's uh, you know a testimony to you know the, to the team. Uh, we work together, um, you know, make sacrifices as needed. Uh, I mean, you know, you know, Vivek spent three weeks in quarantine in China because it was important for him to go there. Uh, I mean, that was a huge sacrifice, and it is it is what we need to do as a business, uh, of course. As you know, the the culture in Asian companies is you know is is it's important to have direct contact. You can't do these business deals over over Zoom or by telephone call. And you know, I I do thank Vivek for his sacrifices in that manner. And you know, going out there and working with the team and working, um, you know, working with the customers to to get both their engagements as well as their interest and commitments, uh, that we're talking about here. So, you know, the accomplishments. I believe are fantastic for this year. I think we're on track to have a really good next year as well. And I do want to thank the team. And, you know, I think it's important that we put all of these accomplishments 
in perspective under the backdrop of the pandemic that we're working through and continue to work through um, during the course of this, uh, even, even the next year. Um, so with that, I think I will turn it over to Vivek. Um, so operator, if you could uh, move to the next slide and also pass control on to Vivek, please. Um, thank you, Suresh. Um, I think I should have control, but okay. Good morning, uh, good afternoon, everyone. And it's a pleasure to be with you, even though we have to do it virtually this year. Um, but it's great to be able to communicate and talk to you directly. So as Suresh mentioned, I will cover uh, the business portion status of where we are, what we are doing. So the first slide. Okay. So, so cover our journey from technology development to commercial, uh, commercialization. It can be described in three phases, product development, I mean, platform development, optical engine design and development, and then new product introduction. So in terms of product development, we have developed and commercialized, I would say the key building blocks of our platform, the optical interposer, in terms of uh, developing the CMOS compatible waveguides, flip chip of passive uh, and passive integration of lasers, both high-speed DMLs as well as high-power CW lasers, each having its own significance in the applications, and also the vertical mirrors which are needed for integrating the photo detectors as well as for the wafer le level testing. POET will continue to work on increasing the capability and features of this platform, as Suresh mentioned, uh, for readiness of next generation applications whether it be external cavity gratings, putting micro optics assembly and whatnot. Moving on to optical engine design and development, our teams around the world in Singapore, Allentown, Shenzhen have worked collaboratively to design and develop the products that you have seen and we will show on our product roadmap. This also includes uh, making evaluation boards. So you see on the bottom of that middle block, there are these evaluation boards that have to be designed so our customers can effectively evaluate our engines and also use it as reference design to help them design their boards and circuits that can effectively and uh, efficiently use our optical engines. And then moving on to new product introductions. This essentially has includes three aspects. One is customer engagement and design wins, product qualification and manufacturing and manufacturing or optimization. Our team in super photonics really does a big part of this heavy lifting of the new product introduction in guidance and guided by poets team. So the, this further emphasizes the importance of our joint venture, Superphotonics, and our partner, uh, SAIC, that is providing significant resources financially, as well as providing world-class facilities. And we are able to hire, and we have a world highly experienced and capable team there to do this process. Our product roadmap can be categorized into three buckets. One is the 100G, 200G, CWDM4, and LR4 engines, which is based on our high-speed DML lasers. Our 400G solutions, which require high-power CW lasers and silicon photonic modulators. And light bar solutions, which are CW light sources, which serve as external light sources for next generation applications such as 800G and co-packaged optics. So on 100G, 200G CWDM4, we are moving from alpha to beta 
and then will be going into production next year. 100G LR4 solutions, we have seen a great traction and customer pull. Poet is uniquely pos positioned here to take advantage of this market uh, to provide high performance and integrated solutions. And we are doing that with coming out with Alpha uh, in the next few months and then moving. And we will be able to piggyback off our 100G CWDM4 solutions to go into production next year. 200G CWDM will follow. On 400G solutions, the two main items, aspects that we had to identify was the CW laser, which we have been working on and have been able to identify uh, partners that can supply CW lasers that is, uh, that is uh, compatible to our Interposer platform. We've been uh, involved in co-designing those for, uh, for a couple of years. And the main item now was to identify a suitable silicon photonics modulator and a partner that we could collaborate with. So we did that and we announced and did a live demonstration at uh, CIOE last month for that. And then on the custom light bar solutions, we have three flavors of it that also we demonstrated at CIOE. One is they're all having four lasers as inputs. We had one flavor with an output on one fiber, one with two fibers, and then one as a next generation solution doing a demonstration of a multi-core fiber which has four modes in one fiber where four channels of light can travel independently in one fiber. We participated in the major optical communications event and uh, conference in China last month at CIOE and ICCSZ. As Suresh mentioned, we did six live product demonstrations. In my experience, even at large companies, doing more than a couple is really heavy lifting in an in a, in a exhibition and conference. Uh, our team uh, did a remarkable job in really doing live, uh, six live product demonstrations. And it was in true collaboration between all the sites internationally. This was attended by almost all companies playing in the optical space with C-level uh, leadership, uh, technology leaders attending and listening and viewing our presentations and demonstrations. Optics companies going from all the way from chip level to module uh, to system and to data center and operator companies uh, attending this conference and generating a lot of customer interest commitment. At this point, we can say uh, everyone dealing with optics in China knows about Poet, knows about what we are doing. The last few years of significant effort uh, that has been done by the team at Poet is now coming to fruition. And some of it we are able to share with you. Just uh, this week, we announced a significant design win and purchase order from a leading systems company. A week before that, our participation at CIOE, making a huge impact in the Chinese ecosystem, optical ecosystem, and also being able to announce a customer design win with FiberTop. And then uh, the 400G solution doing a live demo and announcing our partnership with the Silicon Photonics modulator uh, solution provider, Silex Technologies was done. As we are moving into commercializing a product and putting it into customers' hands, getting design win and revenue, our, our design win opportunity funnel is now, I believe, well filled as we continue to identify new opportunities. We have over 35, when I say targeted, means customers that could be interested. We are talking to them. We are talking to over 20 customers in our opportunities and active discussion. Many of them have requested our samples for evaluation and design win. Six projects are in the stage of finalizing. 
So we are in the stage where customers are interested. We know we can provide a solution, just tying up you know, ends where we can actually uh, launch that project. And four opportunities are already committed and we are in active development to provide those to the customer and for customers to use and design and then use those. Okay. So how do we further, as we continue our focus on the roadmap, we don't want to divert from that. However, we are looking at how to strategically grow the company as well as increase the shareholder value. So organically as well as or inorganically. So we are looking at entering, as Suresh mentioned, strategically entering new vertical market segments, whether it be healthcare, or sensing like LIDAR and IoT or other applications. And also expanding that through inorganic opportunities that are synergistic to POET in terms of technology or product. On the rightmost side, you will see a quotation, a comment that was made by Light Counting, a leading market research company in the optical space that at CIOE last uh, about two weeks ago um, uh, presented and said that the Chinese vendors start to dominate the transceiver market in 2016 as Japanese and US-based suppliers exit. So for last five years, this China has become basically the hub of supplying optical transceivers. Not only on assembly and test and making transceivers, in 2015 onwards, optical chip manufacturing had started to move to China. So what we are seeing is not only manufacturing, even design and technology innovation is happening at the chip level in China now. So it's very important to be part of that ecosystem. So if under with super photonics, we have an ideal positioning for taking advantage of this explosive growth in China and being able to significantly enhance our presence in this key market. So I like to say that one, we have one leg inside the Chinese wall. So we are over the wall. We are regarded as a, a local supplier with super photonics and also as a, in having Cygnus being a North American company we are working with next generation customers in their, for the next generation solutions as well. We want to expand this presence in China with synergistic uh, acquisitions uh, to expand our revenue opportunities in datacom and telecom and take advantage of the enterprise valuations that exist there, which are 15 to 25 X of revenue. So it's a great position we are in with Chinese, uh, uh, with our joint venture, with our, uh, with our subsidiary company in China to really be in that ecosystem and take advantage of expanding our position there. As you already know, we have developed a global footprint for the company in terms of development and manufacturing. Toronto being our corporate headquarters, we established Allentown facility early last year, or uh, April, May of last year. So been there for just over a year. Allentown, for those who may not know, is, a, uh, is where um, the optical chip and optical component uh, 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 development started with Bell Labs about 30, 40 years ago. And there are many companies in the optical space that have emerged there. We have taken advantage of that and established a facility. The team, the total cumulative experience of the team in the optical component space uh, that exists at Poet Allentown would be over 300 years of experience. In a short, in a small industry with a short life here, that is quite, um, quite I would say, commendable. In Singapore, continues to lead our interposer design and development with a strong and capable team there that have vast experience in semiconductor design, manufacturing integration. So that is a hub for our interposer development. And this year we have established Shenzhen China 
which and and recruited um, a team from multiple disciplines within the optical space, whether it be system design, optical engine design, reference design, uh, mechanical design, and test design, and whatnot. So this is a key uh, key team here in China to work with our customers, uh, help with the development, also collaborate with us, a joint venture in Xiamen. And then of course, joint venture in Xiamen, China for assembly, test, sales, so NPI, as we indicated earlier, and having a, a partner like SAIC is really, um, you know, I was there as Suresh mentioned, uh, we can see that uh, they, are, they, are, they, had, they share our vision and really providing the support and resources uh, there to enable um, success of this joint venture. And of course, uh, with uh, Siltera in Malaysia, where our interposer manufacturing is done. We have uh, a team uh, that I joined a leadership team uh, two years ago. It's an honor to come and join uh, Suresh and Tom. Suresh being, I would say, a world leader in semiconductor technology. And Tom, uh, not only being a finance leader, but being a, uh, having led uh, both public and private companies as chairman and CEO. And uh, myself joining them um, is really, I think, uh, is synergistic in terms of bringing in the optical uh, background and experience from my side. So we have a senior leadership team that we have uh, recruited together over the last few years. Uh, one, one area now going to, uh, now as we are moving into commercialization would be recruiting a leadership role in product line man management, which we plan to do in Q1 of next year. So this rounds off our world-class uh, leadership team as we look forward to growing the company both organically as well as inorganically. So with that, um, thank you again uh, for your time, for your confidence in the company. It is an exciting time for Poet and we look forward to um, moving forward together here. With that, I will hand it over to Tom, our CFO. Okay, thank you. Tom, do you have uh, control? Tom? All right, I'm finally un unmuted. Um, okay. Do you have control, Tom? I believe I do, yes. Okay, great. All right, thank you very much, Vivek. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for uh, your attendance today. We have uh, quite a number of, of people uh, joining. I think the number is up to about 230. I'd also like to mention that all six directors um, just elected are also participating in, uh, in this event. It's uh, been a very busy year for POET and particularly busy year for the area that uh, I lead. Last October, we signed uh, a, a very large agreement, a joint venture agreement with Sanan. In January, we did a public offering, uh, bringing new investors into the company. We held a special meeting um, for the purpose of asking new shareholders to allow us to consolidate the stock. Uh, we made application to the NASDAQ. Um, we we prepared uh, a number of, of items for the conference at OFC, including a video, participated in a lot of investor conferences. And along the way, um, the company doubled in size. Basically, we went from 25 people to 50 people over that period of time. Uh, until recently, 
the organization associated with finance and administration hadn't really kept up with this growth. But I'm pleased to say that we were able to add two full-time people to our um, team and a couple of part-time people as well. During this year, we're also engaged for the first time in the Sarbanes-Oxley 404B audit, which uh, those of you who, have, who are knowledgeable about public companies, you know that's an Im immense effort. And that's being led by Mr. Kevin Barnes, our Vice President of Finance and Administration. We're also uh, doing uh, intra-company transfer pricing, uh, which is of itself uh, a huge uh, effort. Uh, what is really emerging as key priorities for us in the company are our internal controls, obviously because of the 404 audit. We're also trying to upgrade overall our information technology systems and to be more um, active in our intellectual property areas, particularly in the patenting area. We have, um, we have made efforts in that, but we're redoubling our efforts to uh, patent, apply for more patents and to document our trade secrets. We're also with as many, as many people as are coming in, we, we needed to, uh, to add people to our human resources effort, which we've done. I know you're all interested in our capital structure and particularly in warrants. So we made an effort in the last press release that we sent out to disclose on an unaudited preliminary basis what our cash is at the end of the quarter as of uh, September 30th and to report on, uh, on our current cash burn and the, the uh, status of the warrants. So in our capital structure, we have some 443 million fully diluted shares, which includes options and warrants. And the total shares outstanding are 354 million. All of the options and warrants that we have outstanding are in fact in the money, um, meaning that uh, their strike prices are lower than the actual market price currently. But that is, as you know, a fluctuating situation, although we're confident that they will remain in the money. Regarding the warrants that are expiring on November 2nd, 2021. These were five-year paper warrants um, that were issued in connection with the Rodman offering five years ago. Um, in fact, five years ago is the date that I joined uh, Poet. Those have a strike price of Canadian 52 cents equal to US 39 cents. We have about 11 million of those still un unexercised with a value of about US $4.5 million. We know most of the warrant holders that have these uh, 11 million warrants. And I can tell you that most of them are long-term shareholders. So we really don't expect much downward pressure on the stock price as these warrants are exercised or converted into shares. Um, we expect most of the current warrant holders will be holding, uh, holding that stock rather than offering it on the open market. The other thing we've done um, in the last year is really try to increase our investor and public outreach. And we've got a lot more coming in, in the pipeline during the next three months in, in the fourth quarter. Not all of the conferences have been confirmed, but we expect we'll do the large majority of the ones that are listed on this slide. I also wanted to point you to uh, agoracom.com where we have uh, done interviews the day of or the day after the press releases are sent out. And it's called the Beyond the Press Release. 
I would encourage uh, shareholders to go to our website where you can find links to those interviews. They're, they're really uh, quite useful to explain uh, the background to some of these press releases that we're, we're putting out. And we'll do more of those. We recently hired Adrian Brijbasi for content creation. Many shareholders, particularly those who are on the Agoracom platform, know Adrian. Um, he's, uh, he's an author and a journalist. And in fact, he was um, very helpful um, and the lead on the script for our video production that we did for the OFC called Singular in Its Genius, The Poet Optical Interposer. And if you haven't seen that, um, I encourage you to go to our website. It's on the main page of the website. Um, Adrian is particularly focused on um, the, uh, the social media aspect of uh, our outreach and is supporting uh, the Shelton Group, whom we've worked with for several years, um, who are really a first rate uh, investor relations firm. Uh, we have also recently uh, enrolled uh, Suresh Venkatesan in, in the Forbes Technology uh, Council, and that uh, is actually a very good uh, place for interaction among uh, CEOs and for uh, just general exposure of, of Suresh and of the company uh, in, in those forms. Finally, I know uh, there's much interest in the NASDAQ listing. We did go to shareholders back in, uh, in, in earlier in the year to ask for the authority to consolidate. And we were trying to be uh, prepared. Uh, the fact is, is the market conditions uh, change frequently. And as we're in communication with bankers, both in Canada and in the United States, we wanted to be sure that if something did uh, come up that uh, we were ready to go uh, to the NASDAQ. Um, we're qualified for the NASDAQ capital market under two of their uh, three standards. We've submitted the application, it's completed. Um, we still have to, become DTC eligible, which is what allows uh, you to um, move shares electronically from one owner to another. And that's been submitted by our new transfer agent, ComputerShare. We have reserved the symbol POET and the NASDAQ is waiting for us to determine the timing of the listing and the reverse split ratio to achieve uh, the ideal balance of price and number of shares outstanding. Um, and uh, that, of course, will, will be determined by how well the stock performs, our stock price performs over the next several months, because we anticipated that this would be a period of time in which we would be able to uh, announce various um, customer engagements and potentially some, some design wins. Uh, and to encourage people to understand uh, what we believe is the great potential uh, for this company. Regarding the TSX and the TSXV, we will either retain the TSXV listing or we will graduate to the TSX. And the, the graduation is um, specifically documented in the rules of the TSX. Uh, we do qualify as a non-exempt technology issuer, but uh, one of the downsides is that the listing and the annual fees are considerably higher than, than those in the venture exchange. So we really haven't decided yet um, uh, whether we will be on the TSX or the TSXV, but we will certainly maintain one of those listings in in Canada to, uh, to accommodate our Canadian shareholders. And uh, that is all I have on finance and administration. So it's time to move to the question and answers. And I'll give um, people some time to, uh, uh, to key in some, 
some questions. We have received some already, and uh, I have the distinct privilege of, of asking uh, various members of the management team the questions that have come through uh, so far. Um, Tom, while you have the, uh, uh, the floor at this point, I just want to ask one question from one shareholder uh, that uh, he wants to know, um, it, why has there been such a disconnect between the stock price and um, what we've heard so far at this presentation with regard to you know, customer uh, uh, communication and, 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 um, and, and adoption? Well, thanks, Kevin, for that question. I was actually hoping that you would answer that. Uh, it's, it's really uh, difficult for us to know what the answer to that question is. Uh, we do a lot in, in acquiring um, new investors and, and talking to new potential investors. In fact, the conferences that we do are, are less than the... the, the um, public part of those conferences that are often webcast are much less important than the individual one-on-ones that we do usually typically that day. And um, we've, we've met with 50 or so uh, different types of funds over the, over the last year, probably more than that actually. And um, there's a lot of interest. Um, of course, different funds invest at, at different times. I think what is uh, what what may be lacking in some respects is this is a brand new technology and it uh, for some investors this requires some evidence of uh, of acceptance by the market in general and we believe that um, we are providing that evidence now through our customer en engagements actually. Um, and I, I hope that answers the question, um, and, I, and I hope that based on the news that we're, uh, we presented over the last few days and few weeks and, and the news to come that, that the stock price will reflect that. Um, I do have a related question here um, from uh, uh, Victor Vielli, uh, who's answered, <laughs> asked a number of questions. Um, and this one I will direct to uh, Vivek. Uh, Vivek, um, we have a lot of customers, uh, potential customers and others under NDAs. And there's some interest in knowing how many NDAs uh, we have out there, but also when uh, from another shareholder asking a related question, when are we going to be able to reveal customer names? Okay, um, thanks, uh, Tom, and thank you for your question, Victor. Um, so uh, I don't, I wouldn't know top of my head how many NDAs, but there are, you know, if I was to guess top, it's probably hundred. Tom, maybe you can help me. You also. Uh, help with the, you, you manage NDAs, but yeah, it's, it's a lot. We have to, in this industry, one of the things with technology is no one wants to get their, what they are doing uh, out to the public because it could, could compromise their competitive edge. Okay. That is where everyone wants to be first people as they partner with supply chain partners. So customers that are talking to us, don't want to reveal to their competitors who they are using because their competitors, you know, would also come to us to get that. So it, it is a, it is, um, you know, a situation because of the industry, because of the competitiveness that, you know, those type of information cannot be revealed. Uh, same thing with partners, uh, you know, many partners and for us also, there are some partners we cannot reveal and we would not like to reveal either. Um, but, the best we can do in terms of communication, we are doing that and we hope, uh, you know, it gives an indication of where we are and how, pro how much progress we are doing. Yeah. So in terms of, I think the second question was, 
when will we be able to reveal customer names? So it's related to my first answer or response to uh, Victor's question is, again, we, from our side as a supply chain partner, uh, technology provider, we do want to, uh, you know, announce and mention, and as I mentioned, our customers uh, need to, in a way, restrict that uh, in order to not give competitive edge. But then at conferences like at CIOE and when the when it opens up more, you know, I hope, uh, you know, next year at OFC, we will visit. I would encourage, uh, you know, all of you to come and visit and take a look and see, you know, the, the customers we are interacting with, the demonstrations we are doing. Okay, thank you. So, um, Mr. Liotta has a question, uh, which I think is somewhat of a misunderstanding. He says, we have four committed customers that you showed on the slide, but we've only been able to announce one at this point. I think Mr. Deliota is missing the fact that we have customers, for example, in the optical computing space. And, uh, but maybe uh, Vivek, you can uh, yeah, provide a- It aligns quite answer. well. I think I can align the, the four. So Tom, as you mentioned, uh, one space again um, that we've been, we have a committed customer we are working with uh, and different phases and generations. So it's not only a one-off. Then there are a couple of opportunities that we recently announced, uh, you know, LR4, CWDM4. And then we announced along with the Char China conference, a uh, fiber top customer that designed in. So I think the, it does align with the number four uh, if I have to think hard, there's probably a couple more coming very shortly that we'll be able to at least in some way, you know, share. So, but there is restrictions in what we can do and announce. Yeah. Right. I think it's also important to clarify that, you know, we, we, we talk about opportunities and design wins and they are product specific. So a, a single customer may have interest in five product lines, for example, uh, that, that shows up as five opportunities or wins as a, even though it might only be a single customer. Yeah, that's a great point, Suresh. I, I think for our shareholders to realize it's not number of customers that could be in a consumer or even consumer, you know, Apple may get one customer that they'll supply the iPhone, iPad and whatnot. So number of opportunities is important Yeah, to, to look at, not just number of customers. So Suresh, you mentioned at the Oppenheimer conference, I believe that the LR4 space uh, could be a quote unquote unicorn or that Poet could be a unicorn in the space. Could you elaborate on that? Yeah, sure. Um, look, I think, you know, they're um, in the 100 slash 200 LR4, um, the wavelength band separations are extremely tight and these are, um, not readily achievable by, you know, any alternate integration technology that's out there. So um, it's one of those areas that Poet has the ability to address. And, and we've known that, and we've known that for a while, and, and we've kind of had some designs and evaluations and, and validations that we were working on independent of customers just to get a sense. But, you know, I think there's, um, a big resurgence, if you will, in that LR market, you know, we'd initially kind of tabled it and said we wouldn't, you know, particularly push for it because it was niche. Uh, but that niche has grown quite substantially and it happens to be a, an area where there is relatively little competition and, and an area that of course, as volume grows, there's always a need to kind of lower cost uh, and, and we have the ability to do that. Uh, more importantly, that space um, is, you know, there is a standard product aspect of it, but there's also a custom aspect to it where, um, especially in the telco, um, you know, um, solutions in the, in the head or of the network, um, there's aggregation of, of multi-engine type solutions. And, and as we've said many times, um, you know, there aren't too many people, in fact, there's probably just one and that's poet that today can incorporate multiple engines inside of a single module. 
And so as these opportunities of multiple engines or kind of our eyes open into what is feasible and possible in that space, you know, we do believe, um, you know, we're extremely well positioned to be able to supply and, and, and kind of dominate that segment. And, and so I think we've kind of tacked a bit, you know, I think that's why I said it's important that, you know, we, we look at, yes, we, we look at what we want to do and then we look at accomplishments and trace back. And I don't think, you know, a year ago, we said we we're going to be, you know, you know, putting out products in the LR segment, but, you know, things develop, markets change. Um, people come and ask, can you do this? And, and to the extent that we're ready, uh, we're able to, you know, quickly adapt our platform to be able to provide these solutions and, and, this LR4 market, you know, happens to be one of them. Um, we, um, you know, of course we have to build up our supply chain in order to, you know, and that's why there's a delay relative to CWDM. I mean, you know, we, we have to get wafers, we have to get lasers, we have to get, you know, the supply chain built up, but, but fundamentally the assembly, the approach is all platform uh, driven. And, and so our ability to spawn solutions in that space um, is, um, is made easier as a consequence. So yes, I do believe that we have an opportunity to dominate. Um, you know, it's, um, it, it is a tough segment for people to compete in and compete with us in. And, and so we will see, uh, you know, obviously a lot more emphasis from both the poet side as well as in the customer access uh, for these kinds of solutions. Uh, Suresh, are there any other applications where the Poet Optical Interposer platform greatly separates us from the competition? Yeah, I think, you know, we, we, we are an integration platform. So to the extent that there are applications that require uh, the integration of um, multi-channel WDM applications, uh, which is basically where the industry is headed kind of going forward from here, um, you know, we start providing significant value. Um, I think, uh, you know, 400 gig FR4 is one such um, application where three years on in the industry with a lot of the top companies working on 400 gig, you know, there is not a really viable cost effective FR4 solution. So the market's primarily looking at parallel optics, which is not WDM based. But when we do an FR4 and, and Q1 to Q2 of next year, once the modulator is ready, um, that would be another such eye popping, um, you know, um, product because you know we have the ability to provide that kind of WDM or wavelength division multiplexing multi-channel solutions and as that channel count increases poet's value increases uh, with it so thank you Tom um, you, in the past you've made uh, presentations uh, noting that Q4 2021 or Q1 2022 would be the time length for the NASDAQ listing now you haven't provided any uh, guidelines today. Are those dates still, uh, that timeline still valid? Yeah, we believe that timeline is still valid. I, I, I would say that it's more, much more likely to be in Q1 22 than in Q4. But again, it, it's really opportunistic. What, what you see in the market is that um, there are kind of waves of interest that come through um, through the banking uh, segment. And uh, I've been in situations where uh, the bankers call us and say, hey, we've got a lot of interest in this um, and you're in that sector. So are, are you ready to do, uh, do an offering? But this is gonna be a little bit more structured. Um, we would see this listing as, uh, as being um, kind of a, almost a initial public uh, introduction or offering in, in the US. We, we're very focused on making sure that or trying as best we can to ensure that we have research coverage. And of course there, you know, when you're talking to the banking side, uh, the, the, the research analyst side is, is completely uh, separate from, uh, from the banking side. So, um, we, we talked to a lot of analysts and, uh, 
and there is there is some interest. We actually we had a note sent out today by Cormark uh, about Poet um, in Canada, um, and you know the 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 path to institutional investors in the United States is through the analysts. So that's our our main interest is in talking to them, and and you know occasion, occasionally we. we need to be prepared to be opportunistic. In this case, I think we're gonna do a much more uh, structured kind of, of presentation to the market. And so we will do that when, when, when we're ready, but we expect that'll probably be in, in Q1 rather than Q4. Um, there, there's a question about, and I think either, uh, I think probably Vivek could take this. Um, do we expect di design wins to fund the company over the next two years? Uh, you mean NREs, I assume? Yeah, I, th I think that's basically yeah. the question. NRE followed up by, uh, by production. I think it's a question having to do with, with timing, right? Um, what's the expectation or, or what does the cycle look like um, between a contract for doing a design and actually then going into production? What's the, the length of time that is required by that? And how much funding can we really expect in, in doing NRE projects of the type that we're doing now? So there are two types of NREs, uh, one that we had got a couple of years ago or two, three years ago for technology demonstration, uh, you know, from large uh, company, I think we had announced uh, without giving the name, we are past that. So there's two, two segments of NREs, one that we are getting now for basically one of the strengths of our platform is we can customize to customer needs, okay, for standard applications, but they may want to use it and stack it up in certain ways, and we are able to do that. So that is a NRE which will result in revenue and we'll sell products to the customer after that. So it's not in millions of dollars. It is, <clears throat> again, dependent on amount of design changes and uh, effort we need to pro pu put in. So it can be, you know, in, in six digits, but it's not in seven digit kind of uh, uh, dollars here. So we will continue pursuing that. That fits very well with the POET model. It also provides uh, funding uh, for our uh, design and development that we do for the customers. The other is in the NREs for next generation uh, products and solutions, which may be, again, specific to certain customers. We also pursuing that and we expect to get, it's going, not going to be a huge number of such uh, contracts, but we do expect to get, uh, get some, you know, uh, over the course of next uh, two years, let's say. So we will continue that. Uh, will, it, uh, will it fund the company? I think Tom, you have better position, but I think it'll provide a good pipeline to increment the work we are doing uh, and which is aligned. So all these, Again, NREs, we don't just uh, do an NRE contract because we are getting money. We want to make sure it strategically aligns with our roadmap, with our development and where our mission and vision that uh, Suresh presented. So it's important that it's alignment. So uh, we get the NRE, but we are moving forward the, uh, in the direction we want to, okay? Uh, yeah. The length of time, second question, from I believe the question was design win to production. So we are dependent on the customer and customers' customers uh, for that. I've said this I pre uh, in previous times, I believe it could be anywhere between, you know, three to nine months, you know, three months best case, but nine months is, uh, is usually a long enough time frame. So to get that into revenue. I think the other point that can be made on this is as in the press release that we sent out a couple of days ago, typically these types of NRE are also associated with the orders for initial 
um, units that are are used for qualification. So there, there's typically, and correct me if I'm wrong, there's typically a purchase order of a small amount uh, connected to these kinds of contracts. Absolutely right, Tom. Yeah, thanks for pointing that out. Um, for you, Vivek, um, there's a question about the Sanan joint venture and SPX in terms of what its what its capacity is. So if, if you could review what uh, JV is doing today and what kind of capacity, I guess, in unit volume it may have going forward. Yeah, so in our business plan that we presented to Sanan uh, when we did the joint venture and some, Sanan has committed to putting in the investment both in OPEX and CAPEX um, the capacity, you know, I can't give uh, f exact numbers here, but that um, that commitment of capital expenditure is at a point where we would become a major supplier in the world, in the market. And also the joint venture would be self-sustaining at that point, at least for its normal, you know, business for strategic, of course, they, they could be additional uh, investment. But uh, today's capacity is, uh, is starting off. It's proving out at least in a minimum viable capacity uh, situation. But then we are, the, the, the commitment, uh, again, it's a contractual commitment uh, on capital expenditure is there from Sanan. In addition, you know, uh, we have a location uh, within the Sanan's present uh, clean room for, I think there was one small picture in, in the slides we presented showing some of the equipment there. And then there is a whole new technology park that Sanan is heavily invested and developing where next year our joint venture will move into that with the, with the space being 5X of what it is. So <clears throat> we enjoy the Sanan's infrastructure and the investments at a, actually a low cost to the joint venture here. Uh, so the capacity is not going to be a restriction on, on our growth here. So Tom, with regard to the um, uplisted NASDAQ, if there are any uh, offerings associated with that, would that be done uh, pre or post the uh, consolidation? Yeah, so thanks for that. That question, Kevin. I see a number of other questions around uh, things like revenue projections and and uh, our plans to do offerings. I, I just have to, to point out number one that public companies sometimes give guidance, not always, but they rarely give revenue projections, um, and it, it's just. Uh, not not wise to do because it's seen by some investors as um, as promises made. Um, you know when you're in a, when you're in a position of having large backlogs, you may be able to predict what your what your revenue and earnings are going to be in uh, you know the coming quarter. We are not in that situation. Um, the other thing is is that. It's it's would be very unwise for us to comment on um, any plans that we might have for uh, for uh, raising additional capital. Um, our our job is to uh, ensure that the company has sufficient capital to do what it needs to do to grow in the market, and so we always need to keep those options open. It's not saying that we're planning anything imminently, but I think that, um, you know, when you look at what the job that we have um, ahead of us and the need to expand out of the data comm space into other vertical markets, it's naturally gonna require investment and it will depend on what our internal projections are as to what our revenues and, and level of investment needs to be. And then the board of directors will determine whether we should be issuing any additional shares or not. Um, and that applies also to anything having to do with the timing of pre or post reverse split. So I, I just don't think it's wise for us to answer those questions. And I believe that covers all of the questions that um, 
that we had today. So I'd like to turn it back to, um, I, I think, Suresh for any closing comments. Yeah, thanks, Tom. Um, um, look, I think, you know, you, you've heard from Tom and, and Vivek, I think we're, we're committed to the success of this company. Um, we've, we continue to be in a challenging business climate and environment, but, you know, we've so far been able to navigate that effectively and, and we expect to be able to continue to do that. Uh, the platform that really we've been, you know, breathing in and out, you know, for the past four or five years is, um, is, is starting to, to, to get to a point where, you know, we're, we're no longer talking to customers with PowerPoint slides, but, you know, with, with real hardware. Um, and, and that makes a big difference. And, and it's starting to, you know, open doors and eyes. Um, we, you know, we have our work cut out for us. I mean, we've got a big busy Q4 um, and then we've got, you know, all of these betas and productions to be ready for in Q1 and, and thereafter. Um, and so, you know, our, our journey doesn't, doesn't end with, you know, customer number one. I mean, that's just the beginning um, of, of a fresh kind of, um, you know, start to kind of the business end, if you will, of, of, of what, you know, Poet's been about for the past five years. And um, so we're, we're uh, looking forward to that. You know, I think uh, we have the right people on the team um, to, to capitalize on this, this opportunity. I think we were extremely technology centric for the past, you know, several years and, and that's now changing. And, and it's great to have folks like Vivek and Ed and, and others on our team that, you know, um, have done this before uh, and they have, you know, contacts with the right people in the industry to be able to, you know, get that customer um, pipeline built up. Um, so, I, you know, I, I, I'm extremely bullish about, you know, what we can uh, accomplish together. Um, we've got these new opportunities in LR4 that are exciting um, and extremely differentiated and, you um, you know, they, they are more blue ocean. Uh, if you if you understand the term blue ocean strategy as opposed to red, because it's it's an area that, you know, there is limited competition to integration that we're excited about. And 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 I'm also looking forward to, you know, uh, making a splash with 400 gig next year. So I think we've got a lot on our plate. Um, you know, I'm thankful to the shareholders for their understanding and their support um, over this time and, and their continued support going forward. Um, and, um, you know, we, we obviously try to ensure that, you know, your value is protected and grown uh, in this company and, and we'll continue to do that going forward. So um, again, thank you for your time. Thank you for your engagement, your support and, you know, all your fierce suggestions, you know, over the period of time, we do periodically listen and, um, and and take action and when we can. Um, so, uh, so please, please stay engaged and, and I look forward to a productive year com coming up. Good, thank you, Suresh. Thank you, Tom. Um, thank you, Vivek, for the presentations. And again, we wanna express our gratitude to shareholders. Thank you all for uh, joining us uh, for this uh, annual special uh, meeting. And uh, we look forward, as Suresh mentioned, to hearing from you again and hearing from you in the future. And uh, certainly we will always be in contact with you. We'll continue to reach out to you and uh, we look forward to meeting with you guys again in the near future. Again, thank you all for joining us here on this platform. Please stay safe.